1995, at the UFC 5 tournament, a little-known Sambo representative, 27-year-old Oleg Taktarov, who received the nickname Russian Bear, appeared in the octagon. Oleg was brought to UFC by a dream to become a Hollywood actor, and at that time he had no other way than to break his way with his fists. Year 1995, UFC 5 tournament. No weight and rules except for biting, gouging eyes and holding a groin submission. There are no judges too. Only the unfading referee John McCarthy could stop the fight and save the fighter from execution. Well, or knockout, submission or corner stoppage. The first stage and the Russian bear in the tournament. He gets a karate and judo black belt Ernie Verdicia. The third minute of the bout and Oleg finishes Ernie by submission. He advances to the second stage where his opponent is Dan Seven, the fighter who laid the foundation for the dominance of wrestlers in the UFC cage. Dan's tactics were extremely simple. He moved his opponents to the bottom and there, due to his strength and power, he didn't allow them to oppose anything. But Oleg, like Hoist Gracie, could attack on his back, which was a great threat to Seven. Unfortunately, this fight took a different turn, as the cuts that Seven inflicted to Oleg were too deep, and John McCarthy stopped the fight, although Oleg himself was ready and wanted to continue. So Taktarov's first tournament ended in defeat in the semi-finals, and Seven became the champion of that tournament, defeating Dave Bonato in the final. After three months, Oleg returns to the UFC 6 tournament. At the first stage, his opponent is a wrestler from Canada and a finalist of the previous tournament, Dave Bonato, nicknamed Dangerous. Benito. Beginning of the fight and Dave instantly performs a takedown, but Oleg gets to his feet and gets hit by a flurry of blows from the Dangerous Dave. The end of the first minute of the bout and Oleg is already choking the Canadian with the guillotine and leaving him out of the semi-final duel. An excellent victory for Taktarov and the first opponent passed. The second fight and rival of the Russian bear, mad dog from Texas, Anthony Macias, who represented Thai boxing. Nine seconds, guillotine and Taktarov's victory. At the same time, Anthony and Oleg had a common manager, so it seemed to many that this fight had a script. And as Oleg told, Anthony himself admitted to him that he deliberately climbed into the grip, while Taktarov didn't know about his self-sacrifice before the fight. And even if he knew, he wouldn't have agreed to this decision. One way or another, Oleg is in the final and everything is at stake for him this evening. He had been in America illegally for half a year already, since his visa had expired and if he won the tournament, they promised to help him to stay in the USA. In a parallel course, he was moving towards the meeting the street fighter Tank Abbott, who was a very bad guy who you want to support, and with his behavior and fighting manner very quickly became a local favorite. Tank and Oleg removed their rivals, spending no more than two minutes each, so both approached the battle in good condition. Beginning of the bout and the Tank unleashes all the power of his blows on Oleg, and then Taktarov takes Abbott to the guillotine and the fight goes to the ground. It was a very long and difficult night for both fighters, because after 17 minutes of the fight, the strength left both of them, and Oleg, due to his moral will, managed to take Tanks back and forced him to surrender. After this most difficult fight for both, which took place in the Highlands, Oleg was taken to the hospital and he lay there for several days under a drip. And while he was pumped out, someone has stolen his new reboot, leaving the champion without a tracksuit. The Russian bear got his moment of glory and won the UFC 6 tournament. Officially, Mark Coleman is considered the first UFC champion, but to go out and win three fights in one evening, as for me, deserves great respect and recognition. And every champion of the first tournament of eight, if he didn't receive the status of an official champion, now he can definitely count on the people's one.
At the UFC 7 tournament, Oleg met in a super fight with Ken Shamrock, with whom they ruled out a draw and then took part in the Tournament of Champions in 1995. At the first stage, Oleg met with his favorite client, wrestler Dave Bonetto, and already at the second minute of the bout, Oleg finished Dave, thereby submitting to the semi-finals of the tournament, going to Marco Huas, champion of the seventh tournament. The duel against Marco has developed very difficult for Oleg, and passed all the allowed 18 minutes. Oleg won by decision of the judges and went to the final of the tournament. In the final, he met with an old acquaintance, Dan Seven. Well, here it is, right there, it's over. He's got it, he's finished it right here. He's done. Dan's trying to... Oleg lost this final fight by the decision of the judges, and this fight wasn't easy for him. But in the fight, the audience again saw the strength of the spirit of the Russian bear, who despite the wild fatigue wasn't going to give up, and brought the fight to a decision. After the lost final, Oleg left UFC. He entered one of the most prestigious acting academies in the United States and also began boxing under the guidance of Freddie Roach. His fighting career wasn't over and the journey continued on the fields of Japan. Defeat by decision of the judges in Pancrase and a duel against judoka Joel Charles, who like Oleg appeared at the first UFC but was much less ambitious and popular. In this meeting, Oleg again held his signature knee bar and eliminated the opponent. After that, a rematch with Marco Huas was organized at the Vale Tudor tournament in Brazil. The fight lasted 31 minutes and each of the fighters had their good moments in order to finish the opponent, but in the end it all ended in a draw, since there were no judges at the tournament. 1996 in a tournament that I was looking hard for a very long time, but didn't find it in an appropriate quality. The Mars tournament in which the teams of Russia and Brazil put up their best fighters and at the head of the tournament was the fight between Oleg Toktarov and Hanzo Gracie. At the same time, he passed only 12 days after half an hour battle with Marco Huas, which ended either with a broken arm or a serious injury for Oleg. So an arm injury was added to the eternally injured knees, but despite all these issues, Taktarov is in a cage and ready to fight. The fight started with an attempt of takedown from Hanzo, but Oleg is good in defense. And then Oleg himself takes Gracie to the ground, and then it turns out such an absurdity. An up kick from Hanzo and a hard finishing off, after which Oleg flies off into a knockout. This is how the puny Gracie managed to make an upset and take the UFC champion out of the way with his unexpected up kick which was far from familiar to everyone before this fight. Nineteen ninety seven Pentagon Combat Tournament. At this tournament, the fighters Gracie Jiu-Jitsu and Luta Libre once again found out their relationship. This enmity was so tough that sometimes the random meetings turned into bloody battles and not without the use of weapons. Jiu-Jitsu is the elite by the standards of Brazilian society, who could afford to pay for training, buy the necessary equipment for training and so on. Luta Libre are rogues, who could not even buy a gi, that's why they could be called street grapplers. Hori and Gracie, together with Art Davy, created UFC and showed the world the power of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which was an excellent advertisement for the Gracie school. Well, about the Luta Livre, they knew only in Brazil and they were constantly in the shadow of Jitsus. The main fight of the evening was Hanzo Gracie and Eugenio Tadeu, who represented the Luta Livre. Oleg is also in the card, and if I understand correctly, he fights for the side of Luta Livre as his rival, Jesse from the Hanzo's team, Sean Alvarez. Before this fight, Oleg worked hard on his boxing with Freddie Roach and prepared a surprise surprise for the Brazilian fans. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. 
The beginning of the fight and Oleg knocks out Sean in front of his own fans, thereby surprising everyone who expected Daktaro to make a takedown and hold a submission. Excellent early victory of Oleg. But the evening didn't end there and all the most interesting is ahead. Oleg decided to watch the main fight of the evening, Gracie vs Tadeo. Before the start of the tournament, Lutadors entered the building and there were much more of them than Jitsus and even more than the police who were responsible for security in the hall. Hanzo was offered not to fight as the situation between the fans was tense to the limit. But despite this, he went into the cage. During the duel, one of the Lutadors climbed onto the cage and hit Hanzo. He responded and off we go. This is how the Brazilian government banned MMA in Rio de Janeiro and this ban was off only after almost 10 years and the war between lutadors and jitsus gradually came to nothing and as far as I know, more of such tournaments weren't held since Pentagon Combat 97 has become the third clarification of their difficult relationship. Oleg Taktaro became one of the first sambo wrestlers who managed to cause a big alarm across the ocean and most importantly, he realized his dream and conquered Hollywood by starring in a large number of films. For today, this is all my friends. If you liked my video, like and subscribe to the channel. See you all soon.